Hey guys, so it's been a little while since I've uh, done one of these videos. Uh, let's let's talk about a farm update. But first, I'm gonna do a bit of a poll. Uh, I'm gonna install a new camera, and I want your thoughts on where I can install it. Uh, it's gonna be somewhere over where I'm standing here, uh, but we want to do the best kind of placement. Uh, I guess so we have uh, the view of the farmyard and all that good stuff um, while still being able to, I guess to have it so you can't aim it right at my house um, <laughs> you know I like you guys but I don't want you watching me all the time uh, so <clears throat> uh, first place I'm thinking is uh, somewhere over here by these feeders and uh, you know where it'll point is going to be over that way um, now I realize this is probably not the best uh, area to put it in and you see them feeders there I was gonna slap it right there by the now disused bunny hutch uh, the thing is a lot of the birds like to spend their time over here um, when all the birds go missing in the farmyard this is this is where they are in front of my boiler kind of in in this area uh, now I realize that you know the solution could be, well, instead of just one, install two or maybe three or five or whatever, right? Well, I don't want to do that. That's a lot of work. Sucks. Uh, so this is option one. Somewhere over here, you know, pointing kind of that way. It'll be a, a PTZ cam. And what that means is you can spin it, uh, aim, and zoom in. Uh, second option. Let's, uh, let's walk over here. Second option is going to be probably around here somewhere. Um, the only disadvantage is if I install it there, you're losing 180 degrees, right? So you got all them trees behind it. Uh, that's a neighbor's property over there. And uh, we can't get through the trees and vision. And I don't want you looking at him either. So you'd only get this area. Uh, benefit is, you know, you could kind of point it right there and see all the ducks in their little in their little courtyard in front of the brooder house there uh but you got that big magnolia in the tree now the barn cam is down there on the corner of that barn and the hen house cam is in that hen house and there's no reason i couldn't install option three which is on the side of or somewhere in there uh the side of that barn and then you get a whole swath view of this area. Now, keep in mind, it's only 25x zoom. So you probably really wouldn't get a great view of the little hangout area there in front of the, the brooder sheds. Um, you wouldn't be able to see clearly till about, I don't know, right there by them poles is where the, the clarity would probably end because, I mean, you're, you're talking about quite a distance probably six or eight hundred feet um so that's option three so we got option one option two ish option three now there is an option four but the option four is kind of the last part uh it it's one of them things i really don't want to do though it'd probably be kind of ideal is simply because i plan on moving that uh, and option four is putting it on the corner of that there. Uh, option four would get you the whole view across the yard here. And maybe a little bit over there into the courtyard. You can probably see them pretty clear. Uh, so that's option four. So in the comments, give me a one, two, three, or four. And uh, yeah, I'll figure out when to uh, and where to plant a camera. So uh, on to the farm update stuff. So, I plan on making some changes, and I got, I got the wife approval factor on this one. We talked about it today. Uh, and it's basically a change to how I'm, I guess, how I'm raising things. Uh, this Connex here, I like them. This is a 20-foot Connex, and I don't know if I want to do more 20 foot connexes or go for a 40 foot, the price difference is about a thousand bucks a connex, you know, so 20 foots are about 2,500. 
and uh, 40 foots are between three and 3,500. Um, I need three of them. Uh, this one's from like 1975, and uh, sorry, sun's in my eyes here. This one's from like 1975, and it's a it's an odd size. It's not really 20 foot; it's like 25 foot, and it's got a few holes in the roof. Uh, <laughs> so when I build this thing, I don't want to use this older Connex. I want to use a newer Connex, one that doesn't have rust holes in it and require me to climb on the roof and patch them. Uh, aside from that, because I store a lot of seed and grain in there, uh, rats have penetrated the floor. Not really that great. Um, so I have to fix all that. Now, like I said, option four, that's temporary. That's moving probably somewhere else. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my brooder sheds over there, I actually kind of plan to stop using those uh, with this plan of action. So imagine for a second, I still have yet to measure this distance. Imagine for a second that I take a couple connexes, right? Uh, I'm calling them connexes. Some people might know them as uh, sea containers or shipping containers or sea cans or whatever you call them. It's that thing, right? So I, I haven't measured this yet, but the plan is one of two orientations. Um, I want to fit as many as possible while not creating an area that is just a small alleyway. <clears throat> so the plan is to take connexes and go this way. If I can do three of them this way, what that means is I have one, two, and three, right? Two of them, I'll cut the wall out between them and make a big kind of brood area that I can insulate and have lots of, you know, bins and wire floor areas that all the, the birds stay in. All this crap will be moved. Those uh, feed storage things will actually be moved outside of the fence so the guy in the auger truck can come and fill them a little easier without having to come through my gate. Um, so we'll do connex, connex, connex. Two of them will be welded together. The walls will be removed and we'll have, I think they're seven foot, eight inches wide. So we'll have about 15 foot wide by 20 foot long, which is a pretty big area. And then the third connex, I'll put man doors on the inside going into that area and a man door on the outside. So I don't have to open a big ass door and let all the heat out. Uh, now, if I can't, thank you. If I can't fit three this way, then I'll go this way, right? Uh, I could probably do a few more than three because of the length of this. Um, but either way, the, the configuration will be the same. Cut a hole in it, have a big brood room. Uh, I also plan to do some sort of sewage mitigation uh, for them, like uh, actually have troughs underneath that are kind of like a tube that I can spray out and wash into a mess. Uh, like it's called a macerator pump and then have it pumped to someplace to store it and let it kind of dry out when the brooding season is over. Um, that'll give me an area to do my brooding and my feed storage and put shelves in and store all kind of stuff. Uh, but like I said, I want this, this driveway here to remain as wide as possible. The ideal way to do it would actually be to have an area of about 10 foot this way so I can store wood for that boiler. Uh, and just kind of stack it up and all that good stuff. Because right now I'm just piling it up there in my driveway and kind of sucks. Uh, the other benefit is of putting it here is that it's close to my boiler. Which means I can cut a trench, heat these guys, and have free heat for all of my stuff all year. Whenever, whatever. And use the free wood that I get. Because um, right now those brooder houses have electric heaters in them. And that shit sucks. It's spendy. Um, now granted the gray one over there is fully insulated. I can use a little tiny space heater and hardly use anything, but it still sucks. I have to rely on that, that heating unit to stay up. And right now my fingertips are frozen, <laughs> um, cause you know, no gloves, but, uh, I have to rely on that, that to stay up and the power to stay up in order to keep that, you know, warm. So nothing in there dies over the winter. And, uh, I'd much rather use free heat. So. Let's, uh, let me take a minute and put some gloves on. I'm going to put this on, uh, on pause here for a second, if I can find a pause button.
no, no pause button. Must have removed it in this app. That's cool. Uh, so, oh my goodness, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna put my dag on gloves on and uh, see where we go from there. So, let me sit this guy down and. Uh, if you haven't used these gloves, these guys are awesome. They're Milwaukee gloves, and uh, they have a real nice grippy texture on the on the bottom, and they're insulated. So uh, you know, your little fingers don't get cold, and they have a cut resistance. So you know, it says cut level three, so you can. Uh, Excuse me. So you can use a razor knife in the cold weather and not cut yourself. Um, now that I have these gloves on. Let me see if I flip this. I gotta touch the screen. Look at that. All the dog hair. See what I told you about them being grippy? There we go. They do have a little bit of uh, pass through on the fingers so you can actually touch the screen. And uh, they're nice to use. So they saw them at Home Depot, multiple sizes. All that good stuff. Let's uh, let's take a walk over here to these uh, these cages, these pens, and uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about them real quick. Like I said, I know it's been a while. Uh, man, these fingers are cold. So we got 15 pens over here. See them all. Oh shit. And we have uh, we have seven of these houses built, and they vary a little bit between the design. So this one here is going to be a chicken house, and uh, you walk into a pen here. You see it's got a little door, as for chickens. And uh, the nice thing is, let's see if I can lift this with six inches of snow on top. <laughs> God damn. Uh, the nice thing is you can reach in there and grab the eggs out when they lay them. We do plan to add an S box on the back for them to get into. Oh, God damn, that's heavy. Uh, second design is this one. You can see all the tracks. Looks like they've been in here. This is a uh, duck house. A nice big front and uh, separators for ducks. Uh, yeah, fingers are warming up. They're starting to burn. Um, so we got two different types of houses here and, uh, they work well. And the nice thing is they're forkable. I can stick forks on my tractor and lift them up and all this shit falls out of the bottom. You just come by with a smooth bucket and wipe it away, put new stuff in. Uh, now you may be thinking, oh, you got 15 pens and seven, uh, houses. Now what now? So... I did something over Partner Farm. Me and him worked together on this and came up with kind of a stupid, simple solution. And uh, it really is a stupid, simple solution. So I took some of my ducks over there and they had no housing. So what we did was we grabbed uh, six bales of straw, laid them, you know, straw is kind of, a bale of straw is kind of rectangle, right? So we laid them on the skinny side facing up and uh, did six long on each side, uh, put pallets on top and then covered with a tarp and laid, he had a piece of jungle gym equipment. We laid that on top and uh, that held the tarp down. So the ducklings can go in there and hang out. So I think until we get more of these houses built, I'm going to do that for these other pens. I'll put the... Uh, I put the fencing on it and all that good stuff and uh, build those houses inside these pens as a temporary measure. Because these houses are about 250 bucks a piece to build, which isn't really that expensive. But when you have to build 15 of them, it's a little bit, right? Um, so that's that's the plan. Because uh, I, need, I need to be ready for spring. Uh, I already got people beat me up about geese and uh, chicken breeds, and I need to have something for spring. Uh, otherwise, what ends up happening is uh, people hit you up, you say you don't have the thing, they move on. 
and they don't contact you again. And, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things you have to act on, right? Uh, regardless of what you got. It sucks, uh, but it is what it is. So, uh, let me flip around real quick. This is a little courtyard to hang out in. I do want to put another camera out here. So that's where camera number two is going to go. Out here somewhere. And you can look at all my birds that are hanging out here at night. And, uh, you know, you see the snow's all poopy. So I really can't feel my fingers now. This is kind of painful. Um, so we're going to walk over here to the boiler and have a look. And I'm going to cook my gloves real quick these the other nice thing is these hold heat really well so when I hold them up to the fire they get hot and then they hold the heat I don't even know if I have any wood in here oh we're at 195 degrees that's good I'm sure we don't get any flame blow back in our face oh goodness Yep, yep, yep. Nothing like a whole bunch of smoke in the face. Holy crap. So, uh, yeah. That's kind of what's going on here recently. Um, you know, aside from the snow everywhere, like I said, we got about six inches of snow. And right now I think it's about 20 degrees. And I got a few viewers who will be like, Oh, 20 degrees, that's nothing. It was a negative 30 here. Well, you know, I'm in Maryland. It's not my fault you live in the, you know, Frosty's butthole of America or wherever. But, uh, you know, it's cold here. I can't feel my daggone fingers. Um, you know, I'm certainly not like Texans or whatever who are all like, you know, 67 and I'm freezing. No, I can handle this kind of weather. It's just my hands were already cold and I put these on and now they're still cold. <laughs> um, so, but the nice thing is this thing puts out a lot of heat. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is a, a wood-fired boiler. And I actually get a lot of people asking when they show up, what are you smoking? I ain't smoking anything. I wish I was smoking some meat or something like that. That's what she said. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not smoking any meat or fish or anything like that. Um, the neat thing about this boiler is you throw all your firewood in here. And since I get it free, it's kind of a no-brainer. I'd rather pay for free firewood <laughs> i'd rather buy a, a boiler for 16 grand than year over year keep spending two to three grand on heating fuel and have to do that every year uh, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that when i can buy something that's going to last 25 years and get free wood you know people are always giving away wood you just have to put in a little effort to go get it um, and actually right now i got a guy who uh, brings me waste wood a lot of this wood in here, you may be like, well, what's waste wood? Waste wood is uh, all your woods that are uh, not hardwoods. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people when they're looking for wood for heating your house and all that good stuff, they want oak. Nothing else. Oak. And that's fine. I don't care what I throw in here. It doesn't matter one bit to me um, because the boiler doesn't care. Uh, as long as it burns and outputs heat, we're good. Um, just a few more minutes here. I'm sorry. I really can't feel my fingers. <laughs> um, but right now I get a bunch of this wood for free. Like this, for example, is, uh, well, it was ash. Uh, State of Maryland uh, has an influx of emerald ash borer, and pretty much all our ash trees are dead. Um, so there's a lot of standing dead ash and uh the problem is ash tree when it dies and is standing um it becomes crispy and uh I, I don't mean that figuratively what i mean is a good wind and it's actually prone to like explode uh so if you have ash tree around your house on your next to your fence and all that stuff all we need is good wind and all that all that shit up in the canopy is breaking off and landing on your on your stuff uh you know god forbid you got your car underneath of it right uh you're gonna have an ash through your windshield or smash in your your roof um but you know that's what a lot of this is this ash and pine and poplar and gum and all the waste woods that people don't really want for their their fireplaces or any of that you know pine is dangerous to burn because it burns so hot 
so fast and can create chimney fires uh, with all the creosote built up. And uh, we're almost there. I'm starting to be able to feel my fingertips again. Uh, but the thing is, with a wood boiler, especially this kind, I don't care about chimney fires. Uh, in fact, a chimney fire is a way to clean the, f the chimney <laughs> um, simply because, you know, all that creosote in there, and creosote is this stuff. Uh, it's a waxy, oily, hard substance. I think we're good now. I can feel my fingers again. Um, and it builds up in the chimney. Um, and the thing is, it works like, as I mentioned in my charcoal video here, it works like cascading effect. The bottom catches on fire, then it just gets worse as it goes up. Um, and then that's how you burn your house down. Because uh, it, it creates so much heat and, I guess, stuff coming out of the chimney. It lands on your roof and catches the roof on fire, especially if you have a shingle asphalt roof. It just sucks. Um, so, I think... Honestly, that's about it. Uh, I really do want to build that Connex thing because it'll give me a lot more uh, area to do what I need to do and uh, root a lot more stuff more reliably. Uh, heat is a key uh, issue in the state of Maryland, especially when it's cold like this. Uh, the little little guys can't handle a lot of see that there can't handle a lot of cold weather. They're all hunched up. I'm actually going to grab them up in a few minutes and put them in my hen house with the other guys. They're big enough now. So they'll go live with my other birds. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. And uh, like I said, give me an update on what, uh, what position you think. One through four. And uh, I'll dig out a camera, configure it, and uh, mount it. So I'll see you guys. And uh, I'm going inside to warm up again. Have a good day.